from the City Skate Bar at the Holiday Inn Chicago Mart Plaza. I'm Natasha Karecki, and this is Off Message, our weekly politics show. This week, remembering Jane Byrne. You were one of the prime reporters at the time, you've told some wonderful stories. How did she beat the machine? She was a fired consumer services commissioner. She was a favorite of Richard J. Daley. He made her co-chairman of the party. He made her a cabinet member. She stayed on with Mike Belandic when Daley died, but she eventually uh, lost her clout and accused the boys, Belandic, Ed Burke, Ed Verdoliak, of greasing a cab fare increase. She actually went to the grand jury and testified about it and dragged them before the grand jury. And so she got fired and she was this feisty woman who took on the machine and had dared to say that they fixed a cab fare hike. That was the beginning. That was the beginning. And then what propelled her beyond that? Her husband, uh, Jay McMullen, was a uh, former city hall reporter. He knew how to get quotes out and uh, for several months, uh, all she would do would be give out wonderful quotes. And so she became very well known in a short period of time. There were a couple of keys to the election, uh, the most important of which was that she was from the inside and she had the guts to break, which very few people do. And to most of Chicago that followed the machine at that time, she was one of them and she was one of them with guts. And of course she had a good manager. To me the big lesson of her is that she came in as this outsider, but then once she found herself in power, she didn't know what to do. Okay, and that to me is a very common thing for people who come and they always talk a good piece and they say how they're not corrupted by any experience in government, but experience in government and having friends is sort of what helps you accomplish things. And so she came in very energetic and then, and part of it, and correct me Fran if I'm wrong, is sexism. She had, there was an enormous sexism at the time that we almost, now I have forgotten, but almost can't comprehend where people would say these horrible things about her. And if you read her book, uh, My Chicago, which is a very interesting book, she talks about the difficulty she had as a woman going in there and taking control of these yeah, things. But you know what, that's not an excuse though. I believe that she made a huge error by cutting her deal with Rodoliak and Burke and Rhodey and Diarco and turning the council over to them. Had she stayed true to her principles, had she stayed real and, and, and the reformer that she claimed to be and never was, she she could be mayor until her death. She would have been. I, I, I had a city council majority lined up for her that excluded uh, Burke and Verdoliak and uh, uh, then Mr. Inside Outside, Charlie Swibel, who was not a public official. He was head of the CHA, but one of the more pernicious people in that group. He was part of the evil cabal. And I had uh, a majority available for her, and uh, I told her about it, told her who was in it, she says, well, what about Verdolia? I told you, he can't do anything to you. You have the majority. She was to take off uh, on a vacation with her husband, Jay, and I kept waiting for the call to pull the trigger and waiting, and she got on the, tr on the plane, and I knew the moment she got on the plane that she had turned it back over so to the, to the, the board. She also mishandled the black vote. I mean, that, you know, she, th there's a that theory. That later. That, yeah. that get later, but I'm saying is the reason she couldn't stay being mayor, everyone thinks that Hare Washington defeated her, but Hare Washington and Rich Daly defeated her. Had, had because she set her sights on, worried about too much about Daly and right. she, about she, she almost provoked Washington's run thinking it would keep Daly right thinking it would keep Daly out but Daly hated her so much supposedly because of her relationship with his father he was envious well also let's let's go back and let's say that first of all she she got into City Hall and purged all the 11th warders from the, from the city payroll and he was forced to run for an office he was a state senator. He had to seek an office just to have a refuge for his people. And there were so many Shackman lawsuits filed that the, the, Jay McMullen re, uh, referred to Judge Bua, the federal judge, as running an Orphans of the Storm refuge for political hacks. <laughs> so then Richie Daly gets to be state's attorney. Jane Byrne was so desperate to stop him that she had Burke. Ed Burke run as her candidate, her suicide mission candidate against uh, Rich Daly. So you that's had, where it, you know, I, I think there may have been You had an interesting article about that this week, interviewing Burke, and he was more forthright about that whole yeah. episode that he's ever been hit. He basically said that they were looking around for somebody to challenge uh, Daly. They were desperate to stop him, and they tried all these other people, and then he his name was last on the list, and he had to do it. And the reason he did it is because his people had jobs 
jobs at stake. His 14th Ward people had well, jobs What's at interesting stake. about that, that run was that Rich Daley had to set up his own organization because the, the Chicago Democratic Party did not endorse him. He set up a series of alternate organizations all around town that did as much to break up the old machine as when uh, Jane won her first primary election. There's a lot been written about. She has a little bit of a mean streak. Did she have a mean streak? She was vindictive and she would fire 10 people in the morning and then decide she want to fire 100 people and then someone would have to pull her aside and explain that she couldn't do that for one reason or another. Uh, she, she was I believe a little unstable for a variety of reasons and so she would do things erratically or under the influence or something and then later she would have to dial them back so yeah. And Fran what was the infamous story with with you um, chasing her for a quote and she turned around and what did she say to you? Yeah after she had dumped the blacks from the school board and the CHA board and there was a massive demonstration uh, outside her office and I ran after her and said, Mayor, any reaction to the demonstrators? And she looked at me and she said, no, but your bleach job is beautiful. I had just returned from a vacation and had highlights in my hair and the cameras are rolling and I was absolutely mortified. But it was her way of kind of digging me. Right. You know, I was putting her on the spot. She's going to put me on the and spot. And ironically... There, there was a wonderful, uh, my, my other very favorite quote uh, during that same period, uh, I don't remember who the reporter was, confronts her and said, well, you said the other day, blah, 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 something. And uh, she said, no, I didn't. And he says, yes, you did. And he plays it back on the recorder, and she says, I never said that. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. But what was she known for? What did she leave behind? Four years, the but museum she did. The campus was her conception. She didn't pull it off. She didn't stay long enough to pull it off. But what a visionary. Uh, Navy Pier, redeveloping it. Uh, the vision to expand O'Hare, to build these new terminals. Um, O'Hare is what it is today because of her. She had a vision to make Chicago a fun international place long before Life Daily downtown, you could shoot a cannon down State Street at 6 yeah. o'clock in 1980, okay? So she really said, we're going to get people down here, we're going to make this a living, vibrant city. Yeah, Block 37 was demolished under her because she wanted to redo it. She never got around to it. And th there was a period when uh, they turned State Street into a, quote, mall. Yeah. Uh, which she under first... Under I think Yes. It it, well, Belandic started it, but when, when the official dedication came, she, quote, dedicated it. Right. And then she realized that this was the worst thing that happened to State Street, you know, <laughs> since the Chicago fire. And uh, she started the process of uh, remaking State Street into that great street. Okay, she so also cut a deal that killed the Crosstown Expressway of Dailies, and there was a billion dollars made available for other transit projects, including the extension to Midway Airport and O'Hare, too amazing number of accomplishments in just four years. Quickly want to talk about her disappearance and then her reemergence recently. Well, so why did she disappear? Why, why did well, she ran, she ran for a lot of other offices, even clerk of the court. I remember her last race. Uh, she said, the pe you talk about the people spoke, they shouted, meaning she was defeated by such a margin. She never saw it office again, but she tried and tried a couple mm -hmm. times. She wanted to be back in the spotlight. And then she disappeared from the scene because Rich Daly got elected and he obliterated her. He didn't invite her to anything, not to the museum. Why did he do that? He was uh, afraid. Well, first of all, they, there was no love lost between the two of them, and uh, I think I think if we had dueling uh, still, uh, I think they, they, they might have had a duel in the middle of State Street. So this was so bad that at one time we had a celebration of Chicago women, and they put 50 boulders, you know, maybe two, three foot boulders, all around the city painted with the names of famous uh, and important Chicago women, starting with Jane Addams. Jane Byrne did not get a boulder, and that had to have been an order from the fifth floor of City Hall. So he did everything he did to erase her. her fountain out of Wacker Drive. Yes. It really upset her a lot. So, Neil, you were really the first person to kind of revisit. Right. Well, because when I saw her, so you know, I do the I do the advance obits. When I saw her at Brahms uh, inauguration, I hadn't seen her for years, and she was bent over like this, and I thought, oh, that's not going to last. And so I read her book, and then when her 80th, what I thought was her 80th birthday, and was actually her 81st, I wrote sort of like a happy birthday, uh, you know, Madam Mayor, and that sort of helped uh, get attention. And then the Mike Sneed rolling. jumped in, and she started to get attention to, to get some honor to her, which I think everyone is really happy that the city was able to do. And had you not done that, we. 
may have. I don't. Had I would. I would never seize that credit, Natasha. <laughs> but thank you. You well, deserve you it. Some. some people are grabbing it. You deserve <laughs> it. Thank you. Thank you. So really, the last few months of her life were very happy. It, it's nice that that was done because it should have been done long ago. And just quickly, what was done? They named Water Tower Park after her, and Governor Quinn, running for re-election, chimed in with the Circle Interchange, which puts her name on the lips of all the traffic reporters every morning. And I guess she got a big kick out of that, yeah. <laughs> and should, I guess. And I, I, I wish uh, uh, there was some talk that they might uh, uh, take the Children's Fountain, which was hers and was once at Wacker Drive. They moved it to uh, the, uh, the site of the Chicago Historical Society, and there had been some talk of re-removing it and putting it in the park named after her because this was something that she really, she loved, the Children's Fountain. She had dedicated it. I don't know if she had conceived it, but uh, uh, this was something that was very close to her and it was also very close to where she lived. The shame of it is she could have been a resource for mayors mm -hmm. all these years and they didn't call on her. They didn't even invite her and that's a shame. Okay, let's shift to quotes of the week. You look like you have. I'm ready. Uh, ready to go. Uh, Rom's budget passed 46 to four, and uh, <coughs> I noticed uh, the alderman from the 47th ward, Power, said that if we vote no, we're a reformer. If we, if we vote yes, we're a rubber stamp. So I guess most want it to be a rubber stamp. <laughs> okay, Don. Well, since we were talking about Byrne, I did find a very nice one from uh, my friend Ron Grossman. She was mercurial. She could be vindictive and speak with a foul mouth when tempered words were in order. To put the matter bluntly, Jane Byrne was a little wacky, and our city is a better place for that. Okay, I'm going to stick with Jane Byrne also. Janie Byrne would be, probably, a North Shore matron. The new Trier Township organization would have totally eclipsed the cloud of the 19th and 11th Ward. Kathy Byrne, eulogizing her mom, what would have happened if she hadn't been widowed in her 20s and left to raise her daughter alone? And then I'm going to go also with Kathy Byrne. She said that her mother loved every minute of being mayor. Thank you very much for joining us this week on Off Message to our panel, and thank you for joining us. We will see you next week.